Now, Rabbi, I want to move on to something that both you and I are keen observers on. Uh, this is a phenomenon known as the bigotry of low expectations, and that's evident when we look at the uh, so-called progressives and how they turn a blind eye to sexism and homophobia in Muslim communities. Uh, they just look the other way. But I wonder if they can look the other way during the World Cup, if soccer fans are arrested, flogged, and even jailed in Qatar for having extramarital sex or drinking or anything else deemed illegal in a country where homosexual acts can land a person in jail. You know, Rita, Qatar is an Islamist terror-funding government with an extremely very thin veneer of civility. They are the foremost funders of Hamas, the terrorist organization with a genocidal covenant against Israel, which has sworn to Israel's annihilation. They've given Hamas more than $1 billion. They say for humanitarian purposes, all money is fungible. It's used for rockets. It's used for tunnels to kill Israeli farmers, Israeli soldiers. Qatar and receiving the World Cup just demonstrates that mm. FIFA is one of the most corrupt organizations on earth. Who knows how much money change hands to bring the World Cup in the winter to a country that in the summer is 110 degrees every single day. It's the size of our Connecticut. It barely had the infrastructure. It doesn't have the hotel rooms. How much money was used for this sports washing of Qatar's human rights abuses? And anyone dumb enough to travel to Qatar, where you risk the apps that you're forced to download, the COVID-19 apps to clear your health record, the uh, sporting entry apps, every intelligence service in the Western Hemisphere is saying they are going to steal all of your data. Bring a burner phone. you got to be nuts to travel to Qatar. If you're LGBTQ, you're truly crazy because over one kiss, you could be in prison. But extramarital sex gets you flogged. Now, they may not insist on all this stuff, but who would want to go to such a repressive regime? And we hear so much these days, Rabbi, about... Uh reparations and historic slavery and the evil of that. But those people have very little to say about the modern day slavery that we see in countries like Qatar, where they treat the migrant workers brutally. According to The Guardian, more than six and a half thousand migrant workers from places like India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka have died in Qatar since the country won the World Cup. Well, if you want to know how bad Qatar is, just think to yourself that they were boycotted and cut off completely by Saudi Arabia, by the United Arab Emirates, by Bahrain. I mean, even in the Gulf, they're a pariah. Their only real ally is Iran, which is the most evil country, uh, government on earth, along with North, North Korea. Qatar's abuse of migrant workers, many of whom have died in building these stadiums since Qatar was awarded mm -hmm. the World Cup, and what Sepp Blatter has already said was a mistake. What do you mean it was a mistake? Why wasn't this investigated? Qatar is one of the most repressive, brutal regimes on earth, and they only get by because they were seen to be an important ally in the war on terror. The United States opened an, an Air Force base. There's about 10,000 U.S. servicemen there, uh, servicemen and women. But we all know that this is a they may be necessary for a base, but they are an absolutely evil government. They support terrorist regimes throughout the world. And we Jews are their biggest targets because Hamas has a charter calling for the murder of every single Jew on earth, including me sitting in the studio in New York City, including all the Jews of Australia, not just in the Middle East. And their biggest financial supporter is Qatar. Rabbi Shmuley, this is why we love having you on. You tell it like it is. Thank you for your time this evening.